Good evening. My name is Brian Scott. I'm the principal here at the high school. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to class night to honor the class of 2023. Roughly 50 organizations have raised nearly $100,000 to celebrate the accomplishments of 13 years of work for our seniors. And there isn't a more deserving group, so I hope you enjoy the night. I have the pleasure of beginning with the two with two of the oldest academic awards, which date back to 1772 when Lord Bodencourt put up a gold medal prize at the College of William and Mary for the student who crafted the best Latin oratory, which would be delivered as the final speech at graduation. Adopted in 1920 by American high schools, the valedictorian and salutatorian have become two of the highest academic honors who receive medals that they will wear at graduation. Both the salutatorian and valedictorian this year are gifted scholars and athletes who lead by example. Our salutatorian this year is a member of the National Honor Society, varsity soccer and varsity lacrosse teams, winning the state championship with the soccer team this year. She will attend the University of Virginia in the fall with a cumulative grade point average of 4.68. It is my pleasure to award the salutatorian medal to Rory Newman. Our valedictorian is also a member of the National Honor Society and Vice President of Student Council. She won state titles this year in soccer, swimming, and track, and is the first Cohasset athlete ever to win state championships in each varsity season. She will attend the United States Naval Academy in the fall with a cumulative grade point average of 4.69. It is my pleasure to award the valedictorian medal to Riley. Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Patrick Sullivan, will begin with the rest of our awards. Good evening, and congratulations to the entire class of 2023. The first award I have the honor of um, delivering is the Major William Arthur Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded each year to a Cohasset senior planning to continue into a post high school educational program. And the recipient of this year's award is Tyler Gould. The second award I have the honor of delivering is the William Ripley Scholarship. This scholarship is given in the memory of William Ripley, longtime superintendent of schools in Cohasset. And this year's recipient is Neve Fitzsimmons. Go to Neve, I'll put this here, make sure she receives it. And the final award I have the pleasure of delivering is the Noel Ripley Scholarship. This scholarship is given in memory of Noel Ripley, a longtime Cohasset resident and former Cohasset High School graduate. And this year's recipient is Bridget DeGroat. full dress and so I, I apologize I, I went 
I, I stepped it back a little bit, but I assure you it's better that I'm not in my uniform. I'm not sure I can still fit in it, so <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. Um, but good evening. I am, uh, I, I'm Sean Quirk, the United States Naval Academy Blue and Gold Officer for Cohasset High School. Um, I'm originally from Belmont. I currently live in Situate. I'm sorry. Uh, I graduated from BC High in 95 and I'm a 99 graduate of the uh, United States Naval Academy. I served eight years active duty as a naval officer and completed multiple overseas combat deployments in that, in that span. Uh, let me first congratulate the entire senior class of 2023 um, for all their outstanding accomplishments and, uh, and, and wish you all the best of luck as you embark on this next phase of your lives. Uh, as you'll soon find out, your hard work has prepared you quite well for uh, the many challenges that you will all face. So, congratulations. Um, most of the senior class has chosen a traditional path to continue their studies and athletic endeavors at some of the finest academic institutions in the country. As the Naval Academy Blue and Gold Officer for the South Shore, I have the distinct pleasure every year of meeting the young men and women who are looking for a somewhat less traditional path. Um, the mission of the United States Naval Academy is to develop and shipment morally, mentally, and physically, and to imbue them with the highest ideals of, of duty, honor, and loyalty, to prepare them to assume the highest responsibilities of command, citizenship, and government. As such, it's imperative that the future Naval and Marine Corps officer ranks be comprised of the best and the brightest young people in the country. Uh, in many ways, the Naval Academy is like the private and public institutions most of you will attend. Uh, the Naval Academy has 50 different academic majors from which to choose. Actually has the most men's and women's athletic teams competing in the Division I uh, level of the NCAA in the entire country. Uh, and our graduates have achieved much success in all areas of life, including one U.S. president, two Eisman Trophy winners, and even one NBA MVP. Uh, the United States Naval Academy can be a very tough place to be at. Um, but I assure you it's an amazing place to be from. Uh, Senator John McCain, a long time ago, the late Senator John McCain, uh, he once said that, and with inflation this has changed, uh, it's, it's a $250,000 education uh, that you pay back a nickel at a time. Um, now it's like a $500,000. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, upon graduation, Naval Academy graduates are commissioned as Navy and Marine Corps officers tasked with the ultimate responsibility of leading young men and, <clears throat> and women in battle. The Naval Academy is a very difficult institution uh, to be accepted to, as the admissions process alone is unlike any other, and the acceptance rate is a paltry sub-5%. We attract and accept the best and the brightest around, and one of those individuals is, is clearly here tonight. Uh, this young woman had one of the most impressive academic, athletic, and overall resumes I've ever seen in all my years of doing this. She's already been up on stage. Uh, she carries herself with great confidence and represents her, herself, uh, her family, uh, her town, her school, uh, incredibly well. She had some amazing future options from which to choose, but I think she made the right one. I'm honored to present a letter of appointment to the United States Naval Academy to one of the most impressive young women I've ever had the pleasure of interviewing, Riley Nussbaum. and essays. Um, the academics is phenomenal. The sports was phenomenal. The essays, actually a couple of them made me cry, I will admit. Um, it was very difficult to choose um, from the 19 applications that we received, but um, I'm very pleased to announce that we do have three recipients. Um, and the first one is Nabil Bonaparte. is 
And last, but certainly not least, is Laura Sayers. Congratulations to you guys. This is an outstanding group of kids, I can say for sure. Um, I'm pinch hitting here for Mr. Ford, who gave me a short speech. It'll only take about 20 minutes. Um, okay, so um, the Fred Troy and Clark Chatham Memorial Scholarship has been given out for uh, a number of years and has kind of been molded into um, a couple of different scholarships uh, for one family. Uh, the award is sponsored by the Clark Chatham Memorial Fund in memory of longtime teacher um, and coach and athletic director uh, Clark Chatham. It's also um, his wife and Sally Ann's father, Fred Troy, um, who had the original scholarship. Um, it continues today through the um, Clark Chatham Memorial Fund and will continue on in that name. So the scholarship is awarded to two graduating seniors who continue to plan, uh, continue to uh, post their secondary school and education. The selection is based on students' scholastic performance, uh, involvement in athletics, citizenship with their school and their community. The students selected for this award are also known or have shown over the years sensitivity and needs to their classmates and also a desire to contribute to society. Um, the recipients for tonight's uh, award, there are four, and first is Bella Cacciaputo. because I had two Bellas that day. Um, let's see, and also someone who's already been up, Riley Nussbaum. <laughs> Charlie McKeon. Santiago Talavera. Wrestling Booster Scholarships tonight. I have uh, had a lot of fun fundraising with their group, and it is our pleasure to recognize four young men tonight. If you could please hold your applause for these amazing young men until all four have risen in the interest of simplicity. Thank you. Um, it is with great pleasure I recognized first Nabil Bonifan. Okay. Andrew Buckley, Brian Hanel, and Nico Gentile.
Sisters provides essential support for all the fine performing arts at Classic Middle and High School. We're so thankful to live in a community that values the arts and the talents that our students share through the performances, productions, displays, and shows. When choosing the recipients for the scholarship, we look to recognize students who found themselves in their home and the arts programs offered at Cohasset High School. We're pleased to recognize two students who did just that. The first found herself behind the lens of a camera and shared her beautiful photos with all of us. The second arrived in Cohasset his sophomore year, found his home in the band room, and shared his musical talents with us at every opportunity. Please join me in congratulating Maya Bishop and Jackson Beckus. students, Francis and Catherine Brisbane, are being recognized for having chosen community need over individual achievements, and we as a town are a safer and kinder place because of them. Through their work over the past four years in the Youth Ambassador Program, they have made the mental health and substance use needs of local youth a top priority. As you can imagine, this is not an easy thing to do especially as a young person. But peer-to-peer -peer communication is essential. Both students also served on Safe Harbor Steering Committee and were instrumental in illuminating the youth perspective. Frances Brisbane joined our coalition her freshman year and has served as a Youth Ambassador Steering Committee member on the Cohasset Minds Matter Planning Committee and on our recent Alcohol Task Force. She will be attending Connecticut College in the fall and plans to study neuroscience. In her own words, she wants to understand those who are struggling on a biological level and help them understand what is going on in their brain and how it influences their behavior. I have no doubt Frances will elucidate all sorts of darkness. She's such a bright light, and I want to thank her for shining <coughs> on us. So this is for Frances. Safe Harbor her sophomore year and has been a youth ambassador and steering com committee member ever since. She also organized and participated in Narcan and QPR training in order to be of service to the vulnerable members of our community. Catherine will be attending William and Mary College in the fall and wants to pursue a career with the UN either in the World Health Organization or UNICEF. Her goal of advancing human rights is not surprising. We wish you, Catherine, the very best, and we sincerely thank you for being part of our organization. And before I leave the stage, I wanted to thank the many members of the graduating class who did serve on our Youth Ambassador Committee. There are many of you you've um, really made a difference. And so from me to you, thank you. That's Eddie. That was my husband. How do you honor Eddie? Everybody loved Eddie. Eddie, it reminds me of the show on TV that was before your time, Everybody Loved Raymond. If you ask anybody in my age group or people who went to Appalachia, you know, with the Appalachia Service Project, if you ask people who, when they ask you how you're doing, they actually stood there and 
wanted to know how you were doing. He was down to earth, he loved Cohasset, and he wanted to make this world a better place. That's why we established the Edward Lapin Foundation. When we look for a student, we want somebody who represented his fire, his fire to help people. If you ask some of the people who are probably, I don't know, 70 and younger, or older, I should say, uh, if they knew Eddie, everybody knew him. I mean, I was just so surprised, you know, when I'd be walking around. But he hung out in Cohasset, he loved youth, he loved the high schoolers, he loved being cool, he was a man of the 60s, he was very interested that the young people like you guys thought he was cool. Uh, and he tried to keep up, you know, with all the different things that our world was going through. Mercedes O'Neill represents Eddie in so many ways. Yes, she's not the same sex, but that doesn't make a difference. Uh, her essay, her, her background, her perseverance was so impressive. And it was, it, it, there were so many applications. Your class was amazing. There was, what was so unique about your class is the community service and all the different ways that you were serving, whether it be Safe Harbor, whether it be working at uh, the senior places in town, whether it be helping kids out, y you just nailed it. Uh, so anyway, Mercedes, come on up. and they all come under the Social Service League of Cohasset, which actually was the uh, uh, Safe Harbor came from that group. But anyway, um, our mission is to help people, obviously. We do a lot for the seniors, and we do, all, especially in this year, this last three years of mental health issues, uh, we, we try to help out the people who've been going through a lot, especially in the last three years, but even before. The founder of this, well, it, it's in the honor of Mary Hooper, um, she had no heirs, and so she gave her, her trust to us, to, uh, and we do the best we can to help out Cohasset, and the people, the three people we're honoring, uh, also represent people who've done uh, quite a bit in service. The first one is Kaya Rollins. <laughs> Kaya stands out for her perseverance. Um, I'm a psychologist, she wants to study psych, so what can I say? Uh, diversity, the secretary of the student council, the mental health club, and swimming coach, and many other things. So congratulations. <laughs> this is so much fun to give out money. Oh boy. Uh, Anyway, the next one is Grace Madden. Grace, also, you work as a youth ambassador for Safe Harbor uh, since 2018. Uh, okay, another psychology major, you can't make this up. Uh, Green Team, Mental Health Club. The interest in mental health, I mean, I'm really impressed. Uh, I, I see way too many clinical hours, 50 to 60 hours. It's way more than a psych doc should see. And the, your essays and uh, really represent your caring about other people and the effect of mental health for a lot of people and what we're trying to do to help that out. So uh, clap at your class. <laughs> And it's similar. Uh, 
uh, this is definitely in the area of community service and helping people out. Mercedes, you, you definitely uh, stand for all the things that the Social Service League of Cohasset is about. Congratulations for the class. Now I have to go back to telehealth. I have a patient starting at 7.30. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you today? So my name is Vince Thornton. I'm the current Scoutmaster of Troop 28 here in Cohasset. Every year, the Barbara Pate Memorial Scholarship is awarded to seniors who have participated in the scouting program throughout their high, uh, throughout their high school career and, and most likely prior to that. This year, there are five members of Troop 28's senior class who have participated in the program of scouting, not only during their senior year, as I just mentioned, but also probably prior, up to 12 years. As scouts, your classmates receiving the scholarship have performed hundreds of hours of service to the community. They have acquired the skills you would expect of a scout, such as camping, fire starting, fire starting, field cooking, and if all things go well, they got first aid just to back them up. This year's recipients of the Barbara Pate Memorial Scholarship are five. I'd like to hold the uh, applause, have them come up here. Brian Cannell, Carl Fernald, Brian Lee, Owen Mulhern, and Danny Smith. reminded me the scout handshake is actually with your left hand because it's closer to your heart. So all five of these gentlemen received their rank of eagle, so that's another accomplishment in and of itself. I'm going to stay here for a couple more. Um, so CYBSA, Cohasa Youth Baseball Softball Association. So I've been on the board for the past six years. I've been the president for the past two years. We've accomplished a lot over the past, I'd say, five years, even through COVID. Uh, with that, I'd like to recognize three players of Cohasset Youth Baseball that participated and are receiving the scholarship from the, from the CYBSA Association. Tessa Cortola, Emma Thornton, and Nicholas Iantosco. here, jump the shark, so to speak. I'm also a member of the Diamond Club. We don't mind diamonds. We are the uh, boosters for the baseball high school baseball team, uh, hence the diamond. Uh, so with that, I'd like to honor four, Nicholas Iantosca, Carter Wimbley, Owen Rigby, and his brother Martin. here for future years, but my name is Scott Bianchi, I'm, rec recognized, I'm representing the uh, Cohasset Golf Boosters, uh, and again wanted to uh, congratulate all the students and the parents here. Uh, 
we appreciate the support the community has given us. Uh, because of that generosity, we can support various programs, including scholarships for diver uh, deserving students. All of tonight's recipients have demonstrated leadership both on the golf course as well as off of the golf course. And these are skills that can be used throughout their lifetime, which is the real purpose of a game. In that spirit, I would like to recognize the following three students for their role in representing Cohasset High School Golf for all four years, as well as for representing their broader community. So I'd like to represent Nicholas Iantosca, Samuel Greck, and Luke Cosentino. TV here in Cohasset, and with me is David uh, Bigley, he's on our board of directors, and he's going to explain a little bit about the Peter Richardson and how that name came about. Uh, Peter Richardson uh, Memorial uh, Media Scholarship is uh, really named to honor a long time uh, 143 TV volunteer and board member, Peter Richardson who sadly passed away in uh, 2021. Peter was a very enthusiastic supporter. He called play-by-play -play, uh, television, uh, football games, provided uh, musical entertainment with his band. Uh, you may have heard them, the Wheelhouse Rodeo. Uh, and, <laughs> and he was really a creative force of nature. Uh, he had a wry sense of humor. He, which was boundless. He's uh, uh, a shining example, really, of just how much fun and rewarding it can be to be a valued 143 TV uh, supporter and volunteer. Well, now that we're reading this, I'm realizing I'm getting into the bad news about television. Uh, there are daily challenges of operating a TV <laughs> studio. A uh, World War II general, Omar Bradley, once stated, amateurs talk strategy, professionals talk logistics. The Navy guy might know that. Um, and anyway, TV has many challenges. And when we get uh, independent study students, we put them through a lot um, because we need them. We actually have the soul for you. So by the time they, they graduate from here, uh, we, I get a extreme gratification to watch the light bulb come on when they know how to put a video into a server, when they learn how to edit. And then, like Matthew, you're gonna find out, has exceeded me in editing. Uh, I gave away one of the names. Uh, <laughs> this year's recipients are Paul Fernald and Matthew Finnegan. They both started their TV journey as sophomores here. By the time they were juniors, they are doing their independent studies with us. Carl has provided us with valuable computer and technical skills. These skills have translated into um, helping us solve many of our audio and video challenges, as I mentioned. He's also assisted in improving our studio to control room uh, connections, making audio so we can talk to people without having to shout through a door. Um, he can film, edit, set up our studio shoots, get our content onto our servers and into our cable casting, and he's off to study at UMass in the honors program. Matthew has been our main man for organizing film crews for sports coverages and helping students in various production roles for Mr. Sasso's group. Um, in addition to producing his own shows, he set up the entire studio for lighting, sound, cameras, recording. He films and edits like a champ now. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> the skills he mastered will come in handy as he heads off to Suffolk to study marketing with an eye towards marketing in the entertainment world. And David. Uh, I just want to say that these uh, two guys really share a can-do attitude, and they're both a pleasure to work with. So uh, on behalf of the Cohasset Community Television Board of Directors, which is Corey Evans, Keith Conforti, Nicole Roth, uh, Catherine Harvey, and uh, of course, our, myself and our one employee, uh, <laughs> Don Roy, the uh, program director. Thank you, David. Uh, did you want to name a few of the students that, so uh, every year we name a few of the students that go on to uh, greater things. And I'll start with Colin Bell. He graduated in 2014. Now he owns his own TV production company. He's been off to uh, New Zealand, all over Europe, uh, Catamut uh, Creative. And uh, you all probably remember Bobby Nahill, who uh, was a very active in this, and he's uh, an actor and writer uh, in LA and doing quite well. Uh, Christian Cunning uh, is UMass and a, and a, a Naval Grad School uh, grad. He's now a manager at BEMA. And uh, Sammy Mushin uh, is at uh, uh, Hofstrad in the theater production in New York City. Uh, Dan Toomey, you might have been reading about him recently. Uh, social media, he's a producer, writer, talent at Morning Brew. And Jack Cunningham, uh, iHeartRadio, one of the biggest uh, radio uh, uh, communication companies in the world. Sully Mulhern, who's around here somewhere today, his uh, brother's graduating, he works at MITRE, and we can't tell you what he does there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Sean Thornton, uh, WPI, uh, works for us uh, as an intern whenever he's back in town. Uh, Madison Gould is, uh, Gould is also in town. She helped us uh, film. She's a great manager. She's at Syracuse. Already as a freshman, she's been the station manager. And the hardest part of her job is telling grad students what to do and when to do it. Uh, so in closing, we'd just like to invite the community. We're not just in the schools. We do 50% of our work is in the community, uh, senior centers with uh, CSCR. So uh, come and join us. Contact us online and join us. Oh, before we go. Congratulations, kids. Uh, my name is Jack Gates, and I'll be doing a couple of things here. First is uh, I'll be giving out um, a, an award for the, uh, from the Sons of the American Legion to a student who is going to be going on to uh, uh, further their education and who is also has some affiliation with uh, uh, family affiliation with the military or the American Legion. And that recipient is Gianna Shiva. Legion George H. Mealy Post 118, a similar award. Uh, we have three recipients of a nice scholarship um, Ainsley Allen, Aiden Mansion, and Mercedes O'Neill. Thomas Wigmore, who is uh, um, one of the, um, uh, uh, the founders of that the American Legion Field of Honors, which is really, really a spectacular display. And uh, this year's recipient for that is uh, Gianna Sciato. Uh, 
final thing I'd like to do is um, is to um, call up and congratulate uh, Raleigh Metzbaum, who will be attending, as you all know, the United States Naval Academy. Every year, the American Legion uh, recognizes any student who will be serving in any kind of military capacity, whether it's ROTC, National Guard, Reserves, or Military Academy. Um, and this year, we obviously have uh, a rally who's attending uh, the Naval Academy. And just a couple quick words. President John F. Kennedy said, children are the world's most important resource, and it's the best hope for our future. Colonel Alan West proclaimed, the only way we can maintain our republic is to teach them the history of those who sacrificed and challenge them to earn that sacrifice. American Legion would like to recognize Riley for a choice to dedicate herself to serve and protect, for presenting her with a certificate of commendation and an American flag that she and her family can fly proudly. Paul Appleton, I'm here to present the Will Golden Memorial Award. So I have the distinct pleasure of presenting this. Um, Will was my neighbor. He watched my kids, and surprisingly, he was the only babysitter that didn't fire us. <laughs> he can handle all three of my boys very impressively, and I think many of you know them and can acknowledge the difficulty with that. <laughs> so this. Uh, his enthusiasm was addictive for those that knew him. This award is funded by his friends and family, people that have run the triathlon every year for him, people that have played in his hockey tournaments, people that have bet on basketball for him, people that have cooked clam chowder in his house. So there's a large group of people that are in memory of Will. I'll give a, a few words about Will. He was a varsity athlete all four years while a student at Cohasset. He went on to play hockey and lacrosse at Skidmore College. Well, many, many remember him as an athlete and a teammate. He was also remembered by those who knew him best as an honest, fierce protector and loyal to all those he loved. He dedicated himself to his dream of playing college sports and worked incredibly hard both on and off the field to achieve his goal. His lively spirit was tough on the outside, but soft, kind, and funny on the inside. I think the, one of the essays this year that I'll quickly summarize before the award summarizes him. Like Will, I hope to have a positive impact on the people and places around me, whether it be by helping others find happiness in a sport, helping a struggling student realize their potential through tutoring or just by lending an ear to listen when needed. This epitomizes Will. He's a special person in Cohasset, and this year's awards go to Aiza Chase and Bella Hachiku. My name is Rachel Metcalf, and I am here to represent the Colonel Thomas Lothrop Old Colony Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. The DAR Good Citizens Award and Scholarship Contest, created in 1934, is intended to encourage and reward the qualities of good citizenship. This award recognizes and rewards individuals who possess the qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism in their homes, schools, and communities. These students are selected by their teachers and peers because they demonstrate these qualities to an outstanding degree. This year's recipient, excuse me, a recipient will be receiving numerous citations from local representatives and the governor of Massachusetts and an American flag that has flown over the U.S. Capitol building. This student has demonstrated tremendous leadership skills. He was unanimously chosen by his peers for his mentorship ability, collaborative spirit, and enthusiasm for working with others. This year, the Colonel Thomas Lothrop Old Colony Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution is proud to present the Good Citizens Award to Reed Nussbaum.
Congratulations, class of 2023. My name is Kyra Lee Corbett, and I'm a member of the American Legion Auxiliary here in Cohasset. Each year we give a scholarship to local seniors leaving high school for college. That being said, anyone out there who's grieving this absent of their child, please come down to the American Legion, join us for Cribbage Club Sunday, 2 o'clock, or Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, that being said, the recipient of this year's American Legion Auxiliary Scholarship is one of the most resilient kids I know, Gianna Shaba. Cohasset Veterans of Foreign Wars post 9146. I am also a CHS graduate, class of 2000. On behalf of the VFW, we would like to congratulate all the seniors here tonight and we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. We'd also like to thank the staff, the faculty, and administration for your commitment to these seniors. We're pleased to have the opportunity to continue our program of providing scholarships to two seniors per year. The Cohasset VFW membership consists of combat veterans from every conflict from World War II to the global war on terror. Our programs provide financial support for local nonprofits, community organizations, and veterans causes, and of course, this scholarship program. We just concluded our one and only annual fundraiser, the Poppy Drive. You may have seen us around town this past Memorial Day weekend. So thank you for all of those who have supported us and donated to our Poppy Drive. This year, we have the pleasure of awarding two scholarships to students who have demonstrated strong academics and extracurricular activities, as well as a close family connection to veterans. The Cohasset VFW scholarships this year are awarded to seniors Martin Rigby and Ainsley Allen. is awarded to a graduating senior who plans to attend college or pursue their interest in theater or performing arts. This award goes to Alexa Cohen. presented to Owen Rigby and Tessa Caratola. for 50 years, 50 years, providing teaching, administrative services, community, community extracurricular, ex and extracurricular excellence to the youth of Cohasset. In celebration of Linda and Larry's tireless dedication and passionate commitment to developing multiple generations of Cohasset youth, this award goes to a student pursuing a career in education or public service. This award goes to Lucy Farrington. Lucy D. 
did mention one time that she might be a, a school counselor, so that's really exciting to the council department. So. <laughs> the Cohasset Farmers Market Scholarship is awarded to the following students. Kai Rollins. <laughs> Caroline Stanicroach. <laughs> Nabil Bonifon. In Georgia Barrett. Susan D. Michelle Scholarship. 
The D. Michelle family was a longtime supporter of Cohasset basketball. Don D. Michelle was one of our past presidents of the basketball boosters. And he and Susan D. Michelle devoted many hours to development of the youth program that we continue today. The scholarships are presented to a graduating senior who has played all four years of high school basketball for Cohasset and has demonstrated a commitment to and passion for the game of basketball. Uh, the four recipients are Emma Goff, Samuel Coletta, Bill Baker, and Jamie Smith. parents. Oh, the places you've been over the last few years, huh? My name is Betsy Walsh Conley, and I'm here to present the Walsh Memorial Scholarship on behalf of the Cohasset Democratic Town Committee. Uh, every year I'm thrilled to read the essays that are part of the application process, and each of you have contributed so much to this school and to this town. I just want to share some of the leadership skills that you have contributed when asked in the essay, what have you brought to school and the community in terms of leadership? And what qualities do you possess that have made it a memorable and important role? And students, you said that you were resilient and determined and adaptable and reliable, that you were understanding of people's needs. You were optimistic, responsible. You had positive attitudes. You were authentic. You had a sense of humor. You were accountable, empathetic, interper uh, interpersonality, interpersonal relationships, that you were trustworthy and perseverant, that you were relatable, compassionate, transparent, you were good communicators, you were compassionate and honest. Congratulations to all of you. Those are qualities that will bring you to a point where you can change this world. We are very proud to announce the recipient for this year's Democratic Town Committee Scholarship as Nabil Bonifant. <laughs> David McDonough, I'm currently serving as the president of Cohas Youth Lacrosse. Um, a little out of breath, literally just stepped off the field running a third grade practice. It's amazing to think that, um, there's my son in the back wing. Amazing to think that some of you guys were uh, out there on the field a few years ago, and even crazier to think that some of them will be out here uh, in a few years. So I'm here to present uh, the annual Cohasset Youth Lacrosse Scholarship. This is a scholarship we present to graduating seniors from Cohasset High School every year. Um, we present it to seniors that, uh, that exemplify the, the um, giving back to Cohasset Lacrosse, as well as the, the basis of their application and their essay. Um, I'm happy to announce that this year we have four recipients. Um, so first off, our first recipient is Kira Fulton. recipient wrote a fantastic essay, talked a lot about what the sport meant to them and, um, and the uniqueness of the position they played. Uh, the second one is to Aiza Chase, the goalie on the Wilson. The boys team also has a goalie that wrote a great essay, Hump. Yeah, Hump. Well, And, and finally, one of the 
the best volunteers I think we've had for a class of the process who's done a lot of work with our referees, Danny McGinty. Congratulations, class of 2023. My name is Lauren Wagner, and I am honored to represent Cohasset Swim and Dive Team this evening. CSDT is a summer recreational program with the goal of promoting education in swim and dive instruction to children ages 6 to 17. Our objectives are to provide opportunities to enhance fitness, sportsmanship, character, while training for and competing in swim and dive meets. Scholarships are awarded to student athletes who've been on the swim team for at least five years or are members of our coaching staff and who best embody the values of CSDT. It's a pleasure to offer two scholarships this year. Both individuals started as members of the summer swim team when they were eight and unders. They have progressed to coaching a team of 160 athletes. These young men have enhanced the program with their leadership and positive attitudes. They were fantastic teammates and leaders but more importantly, they served as terrific role models to the kids they coached. The 2023 Cohasset Swim and Dive Team Scholarship recipients are Reed Nussbaum and Jamie Smith. Although many of you may not have had the pleasure of meeting her during her time here, um, she dedicated over 17 years of her life to coaching and building the field programs, not only in Cohasset, but also throughout various South Shore communities. Born and raised in this town, right off Jerusalem Road, my mom left an undeniable mark on the Cohasset community. With the help of many people, she built the middle school program from the ground up, supported the creation of the first field club teams in Massachusetts, and also collaborated with the Boosters and Ms. G to help nurture and expand the high school and middle school programs. She spent a lot of her years coaching and supporting many of your daughters, um, and it was one of her greatest joys, in particular helping them realize their potential as players, teammates, friends, and ultimately young women. She was here today, I know she personally wanted to extend her gratitude to all eight seniors who submitted their essays for the scholarship. Since she can't, I want to personally thank Logan, Catherine, Caroline, Bailey, Ainsley, Alexis, Kira, and Francis. Thank you for, I like that. Thank you for dedicating your time to the MLS Youth Clinic for showing up for every preseason in August and for helping grow our programs and support all those little girls who do look up to you. We're tremendously proud to support, we're tremendously proud and support each and every one of you going forward in the next four years. On the fun part, out of the eight essays we received, one in particular really stood out, resonating deeply with my family, myself, and the booster committee. I believe it encapsulated the values and the passion my mom cherished of what she stood for most. So your passion to sport, loyalty to your teammates, and selflessness on and off field did not go unnoticed. So it's my great pleasure to announce Ainsley Allen as the recipient. <laughs> additional scholarship this year. Um, this one's a little special. It's not every day that you're going to be encountering someone in town who makes it a priority to show up to every game, probably talks about each team win with just about anyone who can listen, and who wholeheartedly supports the sports in which their daughters are investing their time and their energy. This individual left us too soon, but his positivity and enduring spirit will forever be remembered within our community for field hockey and within the town of Cohasset. In honor of his memory, we have chosen to award an additional scholarship to acknowledge not only his unwavering support for the program through the middle school and high school years and his fears for to his children and their passions, but also to recognize his daughter's consistent dedication, love, incredible enthusiasm, and passion for the sport throughout the years, and more importantly, her love and support of her teammates and friends. 
It's my honor to present this scholarship to Logan Finn. field hockey boosters. The boosters organize fundraising events to support student athletes throughout their season. Thanks to the efforts of the entire team and their families, we are pleased to be able to present scholarship to three members of the 2023 class. These young women represent academic achievement, leadership on and off the field, a commitment to the team, and a true love of the game. They were an integral, integral part of a historic season and have left their mark on the field hockey program and the entire Cohasset community. Please join me in congratulating Catherine Brisbane, Francis Brisbane, and Kara Fulton. stage dozens of times for concerts, etc. even a solo recitation of Friends Roman's Countrymen, and it never ceases to scare the crap out of me being up here. Um, and to the administration, don't ever make the kids do Friends Roman's Countrymen from the stage. It's so I'm going to keep this as brief as I can. Um, Kalasin High School Soccer Boosters award scholarships to two male and two female players each year. It's already been said that this class is truly an impressive bunch of students. And not only that, all our applicants this year are tremendous teammates. This decision is never an easy one, but this year we would like to award our scholarships to Kat Herman, Sarah Conroy, Andrew Buckley, and Aiden Menschen. Congratulations to Riley Nussbaum and Rory Newman. Finally, I've ended our co-op with Hull, and we are, for 
finally just a classic team. Um, and this is the first time in many years we've had seniors. Our two seniors have been four-year players, beginning with the abbreviated COVID season when the team barely played, and they were the only two classic girls on the whole team. However, they're ending their careers, their high school softball careers, captaining a Cohasset team that's having its first playoff game tomorrow in many, many, many years. Thanks to assistant coach Noyes as well for that. This team is going to miss B and ET. Congratulations, Phoebe Sullivan and Emma Thornton. Congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, my name is Greg Kelbach. I'm the president of the Cohasset Rotary Club. 2023 marks the 76th straight year that the Cohasset Rotary Club has honored graduates with our scholarships. Uh, during those years, we've granted well over half a million dollars of scholarships to over 715 alumni of Cohasset High School. I can guarantee you that sitting in this audience tonight, there are mothers and fathers, grandparents, siblings, and other relatives of the class of 2023 who have benefited from these awards, and we are honored to be able to add to that list tonight. Now the motto of the Rotary Club is service above self, and we hope that these awards incent our honorees with a passion for service to their community. Tonight we honor four graduates with our scholarships. They are Mercedes O'Neill, Nanville Bonifon, Morgan Ferreira, and Daniel Smith. <laughs> recipient of the Dennis Walsh um, Hockey Scholarship, there's an essay based scholarship, and this year's recipient is Luke Cosentino. and Jackson Baptist. Congratulations to the class of 2023. You will be very, very missed. I'm going to present five awards tonight, starting with the Cohasset Teachers Association. The Cohasset Teachers Association award, uh, award scholarships to seniors who plan to continue their education beyond high school. Selections based on scholastic performance, involvement in school and community activities, and good citizenship. Preference may be given to applicants who are planning to enter the teaching profession and or who are children of teachers. This year's awards go to Owen Rigby, Martin Rigby, 
Georgia Barrett and Hayden Gow. who has attained the highest scholastic average in four years of high school, guess who? Uh, this award goes to Riley Nussbaum. <laughs> scholarships to deserving seniors who plan to further their education after high school. Consideration is given to eligible candidates who wish to pursue a career in law enforcement or children of Cohasset Town employees. This year's awards go to Morgan Ferreira, Drea Tedeschi, Woo! Santiago Talavera Rubio, and Charles Donovan. <laughs> participated in the Cohasset cheerleading program. Candidates must plan to continue in a post-secondary educational program. This award goes to Drea Tedeschi and Lydia Jeffers. <laughs> Sandy Beach Association Award. Uh, this is an annual scholarship. The association considers participation in environmental studies and programs or projects that impact or are related to the coastline. Applicants are required to submit an essay describing their involvement at Sandy Beach and any contributions that may have been made through employment, environmental research, classroom projects, volunteer experiences, or personal experience. This year's award goes to Georgia Barrett. <laughs> some awards out. They're non-monetary, uh, but they're inspirational and, uh, <laughs> inspirational and to recognize the hard work put in. Hola, buenas noches, estudiantes, padres, amigos. Es un placer estar aquí esta noche para eh, honrar el, la dedicación y el esfuerzo que estos estudiantes han puesto en sus estudios. Bye. Some of you look pretty confused. Hold on. Let me turn my brain on into English. So, but it's wonderful that some of these students have understood everything that I have said. And so, proud to you. Anyway, as I was saying, it's a pleasure to be here to honor the effort and dedication that these students have put into something that is dear to my heart, the same way that they are to mine, and which is the beautiful Spanish language and culture. And um, without further ado, we have wonderful awards to give. So the first two awards are from the Massachusetts Foreign Language Association, which honors the student that has taken the highest uh, level uh, language class available in his or her school. So for the uh, French award, it goes to Hannah Hessian. The Spanish Awards goes to William Trozer Barron. We have a string of new awards this year. 
we have followed suit with many states in the nation of having um, uh, giving students the opportunity to uh, be considered for the seal of biliteracy. That's actually a seal on the diploma that they get to recognize the uh, hard work they've done, not only in their target language, in Spanish in this case, but also in English. So they had to have to do a uh, impressive score on the English MCAS, as well as a even more impressive score on a uh, four-part exam, a very thorough and rigorous one in Spanish. Uh, so these students will be recognized for their efforts. Um, uh, first with the functional fluency. The first one is Georgia Barrett. Santiago Talavera Rubio. <laughs> and these next two students not only got the Global Seal of Biliteracy, but they took it to the next level by getting the Massachusetts Seal of Biliteracy, which sets the bar at a higher level like we do in many educational uh, aspects in, in Massachusetts. Uh, so, William Tersner Barron. Kelly. Yeah. 
Kristen Quinn. I'm the president of the Classic Education Foundation. Um, I just wanted to thank the guidance counselors and Principal Brian Scott um, for helping us choose our award winners tonight. Um, so I have served six years on this board. I started when my now kindergartner was in my belly. Um, but due to bylaw regulations, you can only serve six years on this board um, to get fresh blood and ideas in, which will be great next year. But fun fact, Monday is my last day. Um, so I feel very lucky that the last thing I get to do is play Oprah and hand out checks to kids. <laughs> um, the Coasset Education Foundation is proud to offer its scholarship to the high school seniors who exemplify the CEF's goal of educational excellence. This award is made to a student whose behavior demonstrates honor in principle, whose mind is characterized by intellectual curiosity and excellence in scholarship, and whose conduct is respectful of our world. This scholarship was created to recognize the important role education plays in the Cohasset community and the lives of its young people. Our first recipient is Piper Quigley. is someone who I have had the privilege of watching grow up next door to me. Um, her father served on the board and actually brought me on six years ago. Um, I'm so proud of everything she's done. I can't believe she's not an 11 year old in my yard right now. Um, uh, really proud of you, Alexis Steinmetz. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim Smith, and I'm, I am the president of the Cohasset Gridiron Club. In an effort to maybe speed things up, could I ask the 13 senior football players maybe to just come up and, uh, on the side of the stage, please? Uh, tonight, the Gridiron Club would like to honor the graduating seniors who played on the football team last fall. I was fortunate enough to coach many of these young men through grades, uh, grades three through eight, so they will always hold a special place in my heart. After losing their sophomore, sophomore fall season to the pandemic, they had a shortened spring season in the fall of 21 and one, in the spring of 21, and won one game before the last two games were canceled. From that point on, these seniors went 18 and five, they won a state title in the fall of 21, and were one win away from a return to Gillette as seniors. Though they were tremendous players on the field, they're better all-stars off the field. I look forward to their future successes as we watch them continue their education and athletic endeavors in college in the years to come. So without further ado, um, I have it in alphabetical order, so no offense. Uh, first up, Will Baker, who will be attending Williams College and playing football next year. Next up, Nabil Bonifon, who will be attending Curry. Charlie Donovan, who will be attending University of Utah. Next up, Nico Gentile, who will be attending Purdue University. Next up, Thomas Hansen, who will be attending Denison and playing football. Next up, Danny McGinty, who will be attending University of Indiana. Next up, Charlie McKean, who will be attending Miami of Ohio. Uh, Robbie Norton, who will be attending Syracuse. Uh, next up, Martin Rigby, who will be attending University of Maine. I'm biased, but the next one's my favorite. Uh, Jamie Smith, who will be attending Union College and playing football. <laughs> uh, 
Next up is uh, class president, Santiago Talavera Rubio, who will be attending Mass Maritime. <laughs> and playing football. Next up, Ben Weisensee, who will be attending Hobart. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Luke Wilmot, who will be joining Deion Sanders at Colorado. Thank you, and congratulations to the entire class. How's it going, everyone? My name is Colin Smith. I'm up here with Patrick Horgan, Ben Masada, and Justin Alexander. We're up here tonight to present the Kirk Ritson Memorial Scholarship to honor our friend who passed away when we were in high school. Kurt loved hockey. Even during his chemotherapy years, he got up for the 4.45 a.m. practices and really grinded it out. Kurt loved hockey, and more importantly, he was a very kind and empathetic person. So I think, like, we had the chance to talk to Kurt's mom probably three weeks ago, and she's doing great. She's down in Florida, and the biggest thing is, like, her staying in touch with us means a lot. And I think, like, the message to this room is if you think somebody is struggling, or in pain, or they've lost someone, like, reach out to them, like, be empathetic towards them. That's what kindness is, and that's who Kirk Gretchen was. And so the winner for this year's award is Thera Bernier. presenting the Brian K. Bilton Memorial Scholarship. This is given out to members of the Cohasset High School swim team who showed a commitment to the swim team, uh, a strong academic record, and a strong character. Um, I've been giving this out for many years, and these are two of the more impressive uh, student athletes that, uh, that I've come across. So congratulations to Reed Nussbaum and Natalie Corwin. today it's more meaningful when you see them come in full dress and um, this class actually has a special place because um, when they were freshmen it was my first year here as an assistant principal so I thank them for the memories for the challenges and for their future I look forward to so much um, success for you all this evening it's a proud honor to present the Philip Paisano Coach P Memorial Scholarship in loving memory of Philip Pisano, a teacher, coach, mentor, and friend to many who attend, attended here at Cohasset High School. There are two $1,000 scholarships that will be presented, one to a male and one to a female of the Cohasset graduating class of 2023. This, ca this candidate is someone who has plans for attending a four-year college and university and exhibits strong character, academic drive, and sports, sportsmanship that Phil demonstrated each day and is instilled in so many students and people in his lifetime. The two recipients this evening are Nico Gentile and Aza Chase.
Arroyo, and I'm joined with Libby Kahn and Lisa Evans. The Cohasset Tennis Scholarship recognizes individuals who embody leadership, inclusiveness, commitment, and sportsmanship. This year, Girls Varsity Tennis hosted a Littles event where they shared their love of tennis with our younger generation and future skippers. Its popularity and success make us hopeful that our skipper tennis program will continue to thrive. Please join me in wishing the entire tennis team the very best during their postseason and congratulating our five 2023 scholarship recipients. Peyton Lord. Logan Finn. Caroline Santacruz. Hannah Hessian. And Bella Pico. have been truly fortunate to be part of this amazing group. Um, I'd like to present the Gymnastics Boosters Award to a deserving student athlete who's been dedicated to the sport since she was a toddler, like many girls. She has, an ex she has excelled in both high school and club competitions, contributing to many records and placing in state competitions. Gymnastics requires lots of hours in the gym and strength of body and mind, which she possesses in spades. There's not a lot of fanfare around gymnastics, so tonight I'd like to shine a spotlight in, on this year's recipient, my daughter, Jenny Pillow. seen in the past few years and a long time doing this. Would you agree, Mr. Scott? It's, and it just shows what kind of class you are, as I mentioned the first time up here. Um, which kind of brings me to the Justin Lang Award. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a tough one. Um, Justin um, played football, wrestled, played lacrosse. Um, he was a super kid. Uh, but most of all uh, was his connection with all the class, with everybody. And uh, I think that's what set him apart from others. Um, I'd like to thank all of you that applied. Um, it was a difficult decision. But um, in the end, the committee picked two, uh, and two deserving ones for sure. First, <clears throat> Santiago. <clears throat> and Laura C. 
says. Scholarship and Cheerleading Program Scholarship. This is awarded to a graduating senior from the SciCo Executive Board. The eligible candidate must have participated in some capacity of the SciCo Youth Football and Cheerleading Program and proud to present this to Nico Gentile. <laughs> this evening. The first is the John Hartshorn Gulf River, Gulf River Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship will be awarded to a graduating senior of Cohasset High School who has been accepted to an accredited two or four year post-secondary educational program. Selection will be based on the student's commitment to the conservation, preservation, and stewardship of the Gulf River and its tributaries through environmental research, community service, education, preservation, and outreach activities. Congratulations to Carter Wimbledon. Carter Wimbledon. Scholarship. This award is presented to a Cohasset High School senior who has demonstrated an interest in fine arts and will pursue a course of study relating to fine arts in college. Congratulations to Aza Chase. demonstrated excellence in school activities, community service, and demonstrable work and mission. Applications included an essay on what Cohasset meant to them. And this year the award goes to Nico Gentile. to the generosity of Margaret Mary Hardy, a long-time resident of Cohasset, will be awarded to seniors who plan to continue their education after high school. There are four recipients this year. The awards go to Andrea Tedeschi, Charles McKeon, Matt Finnegan, and Bella Kachikudi.
the Allison Walter Schubert Scholarship. The scholarship's awarded each year to graduating seniors who have shown promise of making a contribution to society and will continue his or her education after high school. This year, the awards go to Anna O'Leary. Justin Wong, Anna Bliss, Billy George Barron, and Bella Catchpudi. Helen C. Stevens Memorial Scholarship. The scholarship donated to the generosity of Malcolm and Helen Stevens, long-term residents and active citizens of Cohasset, is awarded to graduating seniors who plan to continue a post-secondary educational program in nursing or a, career, or a related field, related career in the allied health field. Recipients of this award will be considered on the basis of moral character and the quality of academic record. This year, the awards go to Santiago Talavera Rubio, Morgan Ferreira, Kaya Rollins, and Nabil Bonifon. a recipient of the Golden Apple, which honors a teacher who embodies excellence in teaching. To introduce this year's winner, please welcome senior Tamara Cofield. arts programs, but still we are missing something. I once read a book that discussed the difficulties of a teenager. The protagonist had to endure countless obstacles in a short period of time and had begun to lose herself. Each day she grew more anxious about her role in school, her family, and society. Ruminating in her anxious thoughts, she was losing her sense of hope and continued to feel a growing sense of despair. Subsequently, she became more isolated as her confusion caused her to be distant. As she sat in these intense emotions, emotions, she couldn't help but begin to question why she felt this way and what she was feeling. Searching for answers, she sat at her desk and decided to create a pros and cons list about herself. While writing, she began to realize an overwhelming number of pros, so she sat and forced herself to think of cons. And soon she came to an epiphany. She realized that all of the cons on her list stemmed from external judgment rather than personal mistakes caused upon herself. This was the moment she realized she was allowing others' judgment, insecurity, and hatred to define her. When she looked back at her pros list, she was now able to see herself clearly in a new light. She saw her accomplishments and all the good that went unnoticed. So she, so she thought, why do I focus on all the things I can't control rather than praising my accomplishments, my good deeds, and all the good seen in me? Soon came another realization. After stepping outside of her anxiety, she was now able to honestly reflect on her true identity and personal worth. Now she was seeing herself clearly as she re-examined herself in a new light. All of her remarkable attributes were now hers and she could take pride in them. She no longer needed to be discouraged by those cons because her pros have proven her correct. 
Now, where did I find this book, and who was this girl? The book is my journal, and she is me. I wanted to share my story in the hope people would celebrate their positive traits. We could all use a reminder to celebrate what we have accomplished and take pride in how far we have come, because it is the best way to remind ourselves that we can keep going. Be your own motivation, encourage yourself, love yourself, inspire yourself, and respect yourself. Stop letting the negative cloud your mind and define you. We put in 12 years of hard work and dedication, so don't let this go unnoticed. We have our own unique strengths and weaknesses, which define us as a whole, not one over the other. We're not the sum of our poor decisions, regrets, or bad moments, and that's okay. We should praise learning from our mistakes and invoke resilience rather than soaking in our doubts. So it is of paramount, paramount importance to remember that neither our flaws or perfections make up who we are, but rather they enable us to learn and become the best versions of ourselves. On that note, coming to these conclusions and working through life struggles has been no easy task, and oftentimes we need additional support when going through difficult when, when going through times of difficulty. There's a special staff member in the building that has enabled students like me to grow from their hardship and stay hopeful even when it feels impossible. She has helped students through the toughest of times, whether academic or personal stress, and she never fails to remain by her students' sides. She listens and always tries to understand everyone's story, but also actively teaches students how to manage life's difficulties effectively. Through various coping mechanisms and problem-solving strategies, students have been able to handle these intense challenges by, be by being well-equipped with these lessons passed on by this person. I have nothing but love for this person and cannot put into words how essential she has been to the success of many students at CHS. With that being said, if there is anyone in the whole world who embodies these life lessons of resilience, mindfulness, and caring for others, it would be Miss McCarthy, so please help me welcome Miss McCarthy. custodial staff, Ms. A, and of course the class advisors, Ms. Moriarty and Ms. Berkowitz. This concludes our ceremony. I hope everyone has a great night and I look forward to seeing you all on Saturday.